So for the past over a year now, I've been working on this Raspberry Pi project, and this is pretty much what it looked, looked like. Why did it take so long? This Raspberry Pi has broke so many times, and I fixed it so many times. And I'm done with this Pi. This Pi is dead. I have another one we're going to use. That's my spare. We're going to use it. That's it. But we're going to do the smoke test now. This machine is still not done, but it's as close as it's ever been. And what I'm just going to do is try to turn it on. So first, I'm going to swap the Pi out, um, clean up a little bit, and just try it. I burned the software last week. I have a terabyte hard drive I'm going to put in this. Let's just try this out. All right. So I actually got pulled away for a little bit, but the smoke test was a success, and I'll show you guys. I replaced the Pi, and when I turn it on, boom, we have activity. And my USB hub over here turns on. Working, I got the external hard drive working with a terabyte of games. I'll show you guys what I have exactly running on this thing right now. Um, we'll get into a game. Now, one of the things I wish I showed you guys in a, a, um, a few seconds ago when um, I couldn't get the Pi to work, because when I remounted it to the my bracket, the GPIO pins um, that actually have external power you can mount was sparking and shorting on the metal. So I actually used a rubber band in between the um, GPIO and the metal bracket to stop it. Um, that's just a solution, a temporary solution for now. Later I'll use like, um, like a hot glue or something to kind of use the space. But right now I got it working. I want to reconfigure this thing, but right now it is working. Hang on. That first controller needs to be, the number one needs to be lit for it to actually. And there's another issue in how I can't go between game selections. You know, the way this would work is if the one was uh, solid and it's not working. So I, I fixed it. For some reason, the number one is not staying lit, but it is working. Um, but the next few things I'm going to do, um, I already connected it to Wi-Fi and it updated everything. Um, but the next few things is you guys see a few fans up there and everything. So I'm going to put some fans up there, connect them to the GPIO pins. So there's constant heat. I'm also going to put some heat. Um, oh my God, what the fuck's it called? Arctic paste on the CPU um, and everything so it doesn't overheat. Because this thing is performing a lot. Um, I'm also going to overclock it. So I'm definitely going to need a thermal paste to keep the CPU and video engines uh, cool down. Okay, now the number one staying lit and I can scroll through the menus. We got some pretty cool. I picked this pixel theme. I really like it. Um, yeah, Nintendo 64. I actually have some games I mainly put in here. Um, it actually does not handle this the 3D games very well. I'm going to start Super Mario 64 here to give you a little example. Uh. You'll see it'll start to glitch when his face comes through. You hear that? A little glitchy. Um, but I can get past this, which is good. And it'll play this. Then I can move the hand around. I gotta reconfigure the controller though, because it's not oriented right. Um, but yeah, I can start a new game and everything. So I reconfigured it wrong. <laughs> Before I can only go up and down here and then left and right on the right thumbstick. Now everything is just controlled with the right thumbstick, which is not how it's supposed to be. Okay, finally configured it correctly. And everything works beautifully. I can select a new game file. Uh, and it plays, and it, it still lags on the 3D games. Uh, this is actually... The video is good. The gameplay is kind of trash. <laughs> so I actually never played... Uh, Mario 64, but the playing is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe it'll do a lot more than I thought, actually. Honestly, like, I can read signs and shit. I thought I could. What, I gotta be in it? Maybe not. Oh, wow. Cool. See, we're learning things together. Wow. Let's try a different game. And of course, I run into my next software issue, trying to launch a Pokemon game. It's not starting with the correct emulator, but that's an easy fix. When you do it and this screen comes in, just hold A, 
and all you gotta do is select a different emulator to start it with. Um, this is starting with, uh, I can't do it with this uh, controller actually, I believe. Oh, I can. So when you have this issue, it can't start with LRGPS. It's gotta start with the MGBA, and I'll show you guys to proof. And now when I hit launch, it's gonna start. See, because it's got to start with the right emulator. Look cool, right? Yeah, Game Boy games seem to work really well on this. I mean, there's not much that really needs to go on for this to really launch. Like, there's not a lot of what is it? It's like a, it's got a gigabyte of onboard RAM, so the, the these pixel games are gonna work so much better than the 3D games. I mean, honestly, I'll wait till I get to a Pokemon battle and show you guys what I'm talking about. And see, Pokemon Battles run really beautifully on this thing. And of course, I picked Torchic. Everything runs so fast, I can't even. Between the bag, going back to the menu, fight, everything. Even the animations, the, the battle animations are beautiful. And on my 4K TV, running at 120 frames per second, this is... I'm sorry, with the refresh rate at 120 hertz. At, we're at 60 frames per second. This thing is outputting to 60 frames. We're overclocking in a few seconds, too. I also want to see if the save state works. I haven't tried that yet. Where um, when you save a game and it saves to memory. Not to memory, to the, uh, to the log files. That's how it actually saves. It actually builds text files um, to save the data state. And then when you go to, to launch the game again, it should... It uses that log file to read the text and uh, proprietarily uses it for the same game that you launch. So uh, let's see how the save state works. All right, we're gonna save it. You wanna save the game? Yes. Don't even turn off the power. Yeah, ha ha ha. I'm not gonna turn off the power. Save the game. All right, let's get to the menu screen and let's launch it again. See if it'll uh, launch. Boom. Wonderful. Now let's try a power cycle. Let's restart the Pi and actually see if it does work. So we're going to go to quit and we're going to restart the entire system. Restart. Yep, I'll be back when it turns back on. Also, I'll show you guys all the uh, emulators I have on here. I got the Amiga, Apple, Dreamcast, Game Boy, all this stuff. I also have Commodore 64, but I didn't load all the games on here yet, but uh Let's get into what I'm trying to do. And before, the first thing it was trying to load, remember that emulator issue we had? It was trying to load from the PSP emulator. And boom, it loaded the text file it created to save the state and uh, right where we did it. Beautiful, guys, beautiful. So the next thing I'm gonna do next week is I'm gonna work more on the case. I got the software working. The way I want it to. Uh, I'm gonna put more games on it eventually too. Uh, I gotta still build this fucking power button because this, uh, the way that I turn it on and off is just not working correctly or well right now. So that's one thing. Um, but yeah, so right now everything is running out through the back. All the USB, HDMI, and everything. Like again, there's the. Uh, there's a little switch here for the powered USB hub. I can choose to turn it off or turn it on. I gotta be careful because I'm running the hard drive externally right now. There's actually not enough power to run it from the Pi directly. Um, and I'm okay with this. Um, honestly, I might just port it up here um, and like, make it like a little drive bay and just have like a extension USB cord and run it to the back. I'm right. gonna clean this up and go to sleep. So, again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a good night.